Alright, so in this problem, example 124, we're looking at p-values, and we're going to use the p-value method to test the hypothesis. So in example 124, it says, in a study of the effects of prenatal cocaine use on infants, the following sample data on birth weights was obtained. N is 36, the sample mean was 2,800 grams, the population standard deviation was 645 grams. Using a significance level of 0.01, test the claim that the mean birth weight for children of cocaine users is less than 3103 grams, the mean weight for children who had mothers who did not use cocaine. So the claim here, first of all, let's make sure we understand that it's a hypothesis test. This is test the claim, so we know it's a hypothesis test, and it's about the mean. So we're going to say that our claim in this problem is that the mean is less than 3103 grams. That's the birth weight they claim for babies who were, the average birth weight for babies who were not exposed to cocaine in the womb. All right, then we're gonna come up with our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis and alternative are found by looking at the claim and identifying what symbol it's using. If it's using a less than symbol, that's one of the alternative hypothesis symbols. So we're gonna say the claim and HA are the same in this case. Now that means the, the, the null hypothesis must be the opposite idea. So if it's not less than 3103, it must be greater than or equal to 3103, right? 3,103 grams. All right, from there we're gonna collect our data. Our data is pretty clearly laid out in the problem. It says that N is 36. It says that the sample mean is 2,800. By the way, normally most of these problems use real data. I had to uh, change this number to make it a little heavier than it was actually for the cocaine babies, so that's a little disclaimer. I changed it so that we could use our charts. Otherwise, the number for cocaine babies is so light, it's actually off the charts. So we had to, I had to add some pounds here or, or grams to make sure that we could use our tables to do the problem. All right, and then finally the alpha here is 0 0.01. Okay, so there's my data for the problem. And we're going to take that information now and plug it into our test stat. So our test stat will be a Z test statistic, and that's because the sample size here is 36. And so that test stat will be X bar minus mu sub zero sigma over the square root of N. Plugging those numbers in, we get 2800 minus the value from the null hypothesis. That number is 3103, 3103. The standard deviation is 645 divided by the square root of n, the square root of 36. By the way, we keep dragging this number from the null hypothesis, and the reason why that's the case is because remember, in all hypothesis testing, we're always conducting the test on the null hypothesis. It doesn't really matter what the claim is, right? The null hypothesis is what we test, and so that's the, you know, the procedure, and that's why this number always comes from the null hypothesis. All right, let's work that number out here for the test stat and see what we find. So if I plug everything in, it's gonna be 2,800 minus 3,103. Close that up. I'm gonna divide then by, open parenthesis here, 645 divided by the square root of 36. Since we know that's six, let's just type in six, close it up and hit enter. We end up with negative 2.82, basically. So approximately negative 2.82. Now, in this problem, we're going to use the p-value method to test the hypothesis. So it's important that you round this off to two decimal places, because that is the way our z-table works. It has two decimal places on it. So you want to make sure you're using just two decimal places there. OK, so now that we have that, We'll notice that the first four steps, the claim, the hypotheses, the data, and the test stat have been unchanged in this p-value method approach. But in order to complete the p-value method, the way we do this next step, which is our step five, we're no longer using a critical value. So we're going to draw a bell curve. And then from there, what we're going to use is a very simple rule, which is based on HA, if that is a left-tailed test, which is what it is, we're going to place this test stat on the drawing where it would belong. So where would the test stat go relative to zero? It would be on the left, right? So negative 2.82. And because HA says it's a left tail test, we draw a line above the test stat and we find the area to the left. We're finding the area to the left because it's a left tailed test because of HA. If this had been a right tailed test, we would have found the area from here all the way over to the right. But it's a left tailed test here, so we find the area to the left, and so I shade the area to the left of this test stat, 
and I basically indicate to myself that I must find this area. This area is going to be the p-value. The p-value is equal to that area. So I need to figure out what the area is. To do that, I'm going to go to the z-chart. I'm going to look up negative 2.82. It's going to give me the area from here to here. And when I'm done, I'm going to use um, some logic and subtraction to figure out the area of the shaded tail. All right, so let's go to the z-chart and look up 2.82. Okay, so we're looking at the value 2.82, so we're going to come down in the leftmost column until we see something near 2.8. So there's 2.8, and then if we go over 0, 1, 2, the value is 0 0.4976, 0 0.4976. Okay, so I got the answer 0 0.4976 from the z-chart. Now that's the value from here to the center. That's not the area I was looking for, so I'll have to subtract from 50% this number I got from my chart, and it'll leave me the amount in the tail. So if I just do 50%, because that's the whole area for the full half of the curve, minus the part in the white space, 0.4976, I'll be left with 0 0.0024. This is my p-value, so that's my p-value. That's the area to the left of the test stat, and it's quite small. All right, so now that I know my p-value, my next step in the procedure is to do the initial conclusion. Now, we used to compare the test stat to the critical value in the traditional method of hypothesis testing. Now, we're going to compare the p-value to alpha. And if the p-value is smaller than alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis. So, we're going to say this. Since the p-value is less than alpha here, because the p-value is 0 0.0024 and alpha is 0 0.01, and since that inequality holds true that the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. We reject the null hypothesis. Remember, when you reject the null, you at the same time support the alternative. So this is our pair of conclusions here. Because we rejected the null, we supported the alternative. Now, the next part of the procedure is to then state our final conclusion based on the claim. So the claim, if you look at it here, is the same as the alternative. So we should use the phrasing that goes with that. So we should say we support the claim. The sample data support the claim. I'm going to go ahead and write that down here. The sample data support the claim. And of course, what's the claim? The claim is that if you um, expose your child to cocaine while it's in the womb, it's likely to be underweight. The, the mean weight for cocaine babies is less than the um, weight for healthy babies. So essentially, the message here is that it's another reason that cocaine is a bad idea.